Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to a little bit of a follow-up to my previous video which talked all about the Nintendo World Championships, both the physical side and the gameplay side of it. Uh, but after that, an interesting question was posed saying, what happens if you make it all the way to the end of Super Mario Bros. 1? in the competition cart. Of course they give you 99 lives, so it's very obvious that they do not want you game overing, but they probably never expected that somebody would run all of the way to the end of the game. Of course the main goal in round one of the Nintendo World Championships is just to collect 50 coins, and that is a very easy feat to do within even just a couple of levels, so there's no reason that you would normally make it all of the way to 8-4, especially since the competition was timed and normally you would only have 6 minutes and 21 seconds. By switching all of the switches on the front of the cartridge to the right, you can actually bump that time up to 9 minutes and 46 seconds, so that is what we are doing for the purposes of this video. That will definitely give us enough time to make it all the way to the end, while also giving us enough time to, you know, experiment or, you know, maybe deal with whatever the aftermath of actually beating 8-4 in the competition cart is. What you just saw there though is actually another thing I figured we would try along the way. I just picked up a 1-up and showed that even if you get a 1-up when you're at 99 lives, it will not go up to 100. It will stay at 99. So busting a little mini myth while busting the bigger one as well. Here we are going to pick up our first few coins. Of course we don't want to get 50 of them because that will end kind of our playthrough right here. But those are our first two and overall you do not need to worry too much about the coin pickups on the way from 1-1 to 8-4 if you are using warps as long as you don't grab you know any of the massive amounts of them that float above you you should be okay although it's very tempting considering when I play through Mario 1 normally I'm just all over those coins but yeah so here we are at 8-1 just doing the playthrough of the game as quick as we possibly can and this is kind of where I just stopped caring too much about you know avoiding the coins you have to make some jumps here so you're gonna pick them up but again don't have to worry about that too much because there's not really that many coins in your way that you'll need to fear completing the challenge before getting to 8-4. So here we are in 8-4. We just need to make sure that nothing goes wrong right at the end and all we need to do is defeat Bowser or Koopa, whichever you prefer, back in the good old NES days and we will see just what happens when making it to the end of Mario 1 in the NWC competition cart. As you can see, things are looking very similar to if you beat the normal game. And what actually happens is you are taken to the so-called second quest. You're taken back to kind of the little intro title screen that it shows at the beginning of the contest. And now back at 1-1 with all of the increased difficulty enemies. So, you know, Goombas become Buzzy Beetles, Koopa Troopas move faster. However, if you look at the top of the screen, you will notice that our coins and score have been reset. So this poses two interesting questions. One, what will happen to our score at the end of the competition? Will it note that we, you know, had all of those points accumulated from the first run? Or will it just take our score that we have now? And secondly, Will it remember that we collected 18 coins during our first playthrough, meaning that we only need to collect 32 more in order to complete the challenge? Or do we actually need to collect a total of 68 coins because those 18 plus 50 in order to complete the challenge? We're coming up on a total of 32 coins right now. So there you go. As you can see, the first uh, little myth there is that yes, it does not remember that you collected any coins during your first playthrough and that everything has actually been reset. You do, once again, need to start from zero and collect all of the coins up to 50. I suppose that means that the maximum number of coins you could collect in a playthrough of the NWC is 99 if you get 49 the first time and then 50 the second time. But here we are, coming up to the end of the Super Mario Coin Challenge. I'm not the fastest Super Mario Brothers player in the world, but thankfully we did have enough time to get all of that done. And there it claims that we only got 14,400 points. It made no note of any of the points that we accumulated in our original run through the game. And of course, after Super Mario Brothers Challenge, we are taken to Rad Racer. And it is just as you would expect. The, the game does not in any way seem to acknowledge that we beat Super Mario Brothers twice. And zooming ahead just a little bit, unfortunately we did not have time to make it to Tetris. But there you go! The game in no way acknowledged that we had that first playthrough whatsoever. It did acknowledge it in the fact 
that we were taken to Super Mario Bros. The Second Quest when taken back to 1-1. However, in terms of the competition, our score was reset, our coins were reset, so for the question of what happens if you beat Super Mario Bros. 1 in the Nintendo World Championships 1990, well the answer to that is, you'll have a pretty terrible score at the end of the day. <laughs> so yeah, that is just a little bit of an experiment. I do not believe anybody has ever shown this before, uh, and when I heard someone else you know, pose the question, it definitely piqued my curiosity. So I hope that everyone has enjoyed this kind of seeing what kind of craziness happens if you do something that Nintendo clearly never expected you to do. It definitely, you know, I was, I was wondering, maybe is it going to crash the game or is it going to freak out? But it actually does seem to, ha uh, you know, in a way, have actually accounted for it pretty well, except for the fact that you lose everything. So there's no reason at all that if you were taking part in the competition, you would want to beat the game, unless there is some kind of massive trick move to score massive points you could pull off with Buzzy Beetles that have, you know, transformed from Goombas at some point in the game, but I don't believe so. Also, there was kind of the additional rule added in in the uh, Universal Studios stage of the tournament, where you had to make it to the Tetris stage, otherwise none of the points that you got would count. So, like, you couldn't just rack up points in Super Mario Brothers and then not go to Tetris, you'd be disqualified. However, of course, since Tetris's points are multiplied by 25, it doesn't seem very beneficial to just rack up all of your points in Super Mario Brothers anyway. So, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this little bit of an analysis. I thought it'd be fun doing something that I don't think anyone else has ever done before. Uh, and if you haven't checked out my original Nintendo World Championships video where I do the whole unboxing, I do a whole playthrough, of the game, where you can see, you know, just as the tournament would have been back in the day. Uh, I definitely encourage you to check that out, but thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed, and hope to see you next time when we look at more retro gaming stuff. So thanks, and see you later.